fertile valley. Yes, the Amish, who place high value on family, farm, and faith. Today in Lancaster, you'll be seeing Olympic welterweight champion Mark Breland undefeated in eight professional bouts in his first 10-round event as he takes on his toughest opponent to date, undefeated University of Hartford senior Tri Wortham, winner of all 25 professional bouts. Yes, a welterweight battle of the unbeatens. First, you'll be looking at Olympic super heavyweight gold medal winner, and here is Tyrell Biggs in the ring, ready to go. Today, going for his seventh straight knockout victory against a very dangerous veteran from Tulsa, James Quick Tillis, who in 38 bouts has met five world champions. He's had some important heavyweights on the deck. Here in Lancaster, it's a sellout crowd. The cabaret room usually reserved for show business stars. But today, the spotlight is on Biggs, Breland, Tillis, and Wortham. All coming up live on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Lancaster is really tuned up for the first of two important bouts here on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Tyrell Biggs, undefeated in seven fights. He's knocked out his last six opponents. He'll try not to let that happen against a hard-hitting James Tillis with 24 knockouts, 38 total bouts. So it's a veteran against the Olympic gold medal winner. Hello again. I'm Chris Shankle. Always in boxing, there are the intangibles. So watch James Quick Tillis from Tulsa, Oklahoma, just off a fight with Jerry Kotsia in Johannesburg, where he lasted the 10-round distance, go right for the Olympic champion. They always want to test a gold medal winner. On the other hand, Tyrell Biggs has changed his style of boxing now has become a fair puncher. This is a tiny ring, only 17 by 17. So his speed may be cut down a little bit as we go to the ring now, and Frank Cappuccino, the referee, is in the center as we look at the tail of the tape. 28 years of age for Tillis, 25 for Biggs. Biggs just uh, about three inches taller. The weight, 217, 214 and a quarter, and the reach, the advantage to Biggs, who comes out of the right corner. He is a big heavyweight. We have done Tillis bouts, especially when he defeated Ernie Shavers in Las Vegas and he impressed me. He will probably try to get to Biggs early and end it early because he doesn't necessarily want to go against this youngster, so to speak, a full eight rounds. But don't forget, Breland and Wortham will follow this bout. There is um, Tyrell trying to reach in there with a long left jab. And he's going both to the head and body, mixing it up beautifully. Tillis, on the other hand, is not in awe of the Olympic champion. <laughs> Tillis has had Carl Williams, Carl the Truth Williams. He's had Reg Page on the deck. He may go pretty soon himself. He just caught a tremendous left hook from Tyrell Biggs in the white trunks with the blue stripes. Another one, but then a, a left hook almost below the belt on Biggs. Tillis now uh, doing the pressing, pressuring Biggs to see how much pressure he can take. Look at the wide stance of Tillis. Has his hands down low, but keeps flicking out that left jab, first to the head, and big smiles. Good blocking of punches by the veteran. Showing his defensive skill as he moves away, and Biggs now begins to move forward, taking over uh, the pace of the fight. And a sneak right hand stung Biggs, and so did that left hand. Round one with about a minute and a half to go. More than the usual action for heavyweights in the first round. That one was caught on the shoulder. Had it landed on the chin by Tillis. Stay in that corner, Ty. Well, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, in the ring itself, the lights have failed. We had a tremendous power failure, only getting the house lights. It is a big problem. It's the first time in boxing I've had that happen. I did have it happen in figure skating in Hartford, Connecticut once. So while we're getting the electricians to repair all this, we're going to uh, show you World Cup Boxing, Seoul, Korea. And our colleague on the scene then was Al Trotwick. Here he is. Someone working on the Seoul, Korea, not in this auditorium. Working with me in this featherweight final as part of the World Cup tonight is a man who's been behind the scenes for ABC for a great number of years and now steps in front of the camera, oh, Alex Wallow. Wow. Alex, the Cubans are not here, and that sets up an interesting featherweight final. Al, as you say, the Cubans are not here. Uh, they had a scheduling conflict which did not allow them to participate in the North American Championships, which was the qualifying tournament for this World Cup. 
but the Cubans who dominate so many divisions in amateur boxing do not have an overwhelmingly powerful representative in the featherweight division. And in fact, these two young men in the ring today may be the top featherweights in the world of amateur boxing. Before this fight begins, we should clarify what may be a confusing point. Both of these boxers represent North America, but different North American teams because the North Americans are the defending champions in World Cup competition. And so we move to Kelsey Banks, a kid from a big family, four sisters and three brothers and a supportive dad who so often spends his own money that he earns as a steel worker to send Kelsey to different spots over the country where he can fight and hopefully earn his way into the pros. He will be fighting Juan Molina, the North American champion in this weight class. They know each other from previous meetings. Indeed they do, Al. The Molina and Banks first met in the semifinals of this year's North American Championships. And in that match, Molina won a four to one split decision. Kelsey Banks has worked very hard to prove that was a fluke. And this featherweight final in Seoul, Korea is underway. A quick reminder about the scoring. A 20 point must system. The winner of each round receives 20 points. The loser receives 19 or less from the five judges who are backed up by a five member jury. And quickly, Kelsey Banks tries to move in on Juan Molina and avenge that defeat. But Molina quickly retaliates and sends Kelsey Banks to the canvas. A crushing right hand by Molina has Banks hurt he puts his gloves up to show the referee Han of Korea that he's ready to fight but he is in no condition right now to continue out Molina roaring at Banks and Banks is having no time of it in getting that right hand out and re-establishing himself second standing eight count for Kelsey Banks one more in this round or in any round and the fight is over No idea what Mr. Han of Korea, the referee, was signaling to the judges and the jury. It does not look like the time to recover did Kelsey Banks very much good. Al, he is still hurt. He's laying on the ropes. He must move to get out of range of the bombs that Molina is throwing. This is the third standing eight count, and this fight is over. The referee will continue to the count of eight and then call this bout. He's continuing. He's allowing him to continue. Now he's being told by the judges. The ringside are telling him to stop the fight. This fight is over. Some confusion in the ring. Mr. Han of Korea not remembering the rule and now is being reminded by the judges and there is jubilation in the corner of Juan Molina, the North American champion. We said coming in that these were perhaps the two best featherweights in the world. And Juan Molina, I believe, with this sensational victory, Al, has established himself as the finest 125-pound amateur fighter in the world. It is an almost expressionless Kelsey Banks that we are looking at. Doesn't look woozy, but doesn't look like he was ready to fight anymore either. He may be expressionless, Al, but he's very, very upset inside, I can tell you that. And this is what made him so. Opening seconds, round number one, and that big right hand. Juan Molina exploded on the chin of Kelsey Banks. Kelsey got up, took two more standing eight counts, but it was all over in round one. Juan Molina, the biggest victory of his career and the most sensational. The gold medal for Juan, and that will be quite a souvenir from Seoul, Korea, to take home to Puerto Rico. As you can see, here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, full power has been restored. What happened? Because of icy okay, roads fellas, outside, there was a car accident by, right here by, by the Americana Host Let's Farm go. Resort, knocking down a pole which had the power leading in. So we had a temporary standby generator. Now, these fighters have put on their robes for minutes. They have a one minute and nine second remaining in the first round. If you just joined us, you're looking at Olympic gold medal super heavyweight winner who just got caught by right hand Tyrell Biggs, white trunks of the blue stripe. With 38 professional fights and 24 knockouts, James Quick Tillis, who is putting on the pressure. He, against uh, Biggs in particular, Tillis doesn't want to go the full eight rounds because t uh, Biggs is younger, fresher, and perhaps the, the toll has been taken by the tough opponents that Tillis has had since 1978 when he turned professional. But he can box, and remember, these are big fellows. 217-pound bigs on the left, 214 and a quarter Tillis with his back to us. No knockdowns, neither fighter cut. Pennsylvania rules, three judges, five-point must for each round. 
Five point must to the winner. All right, they'll get uh, further rest ah. in about five seconds here in Lancaster. We'll be back. Round two, Biggs versus Tillis. Biggs' sternest test to date. There's Biggs in the blue stripe. Frank Cappuccino of Cherry Hills, New Jersey, is the veteran referee. Just prior to the sounding the bell ending the first round, Tillis caught Biggs with a big left hook. In the five-point must scoring system, we gave the first round to Biggs five to four. But Biggs is not intimidated. He led with a right hand that just whistled by the chin of Tillis. About a three-inch reach advantage and showing some defensive skill and counter-punching now. Neither fighter really taking over the lead, just sort of finding a spot in the ring and pumping away with the left jabs, looking, there's a right-hand lead by Tillis. Biggs has been known throughout his amateur career and winning world championships, national and gold medals for his hand speed and foot speed. Not quite as fast as usual because he's tried to plant himself to get some power behind. Now trying, oh, beautifully blocked left, thrown by Tillis. We're in the second round, and Tillis is back to his usual style of counterpunching. Biggs taking over the lead and just waiting to land that right hand. He has in a pretty good hitting position there, up by his chest, center of his body, good stance. He's on a string of six knockout victories. Only his eighth. That was low but blocked by the forearm of Biggs. Biggs didn't like it one bit. Tried to come through with a one-two. So. Tell us who's getting fancy with the left hand. Caught a punch and another one. The left hook was blocked. Biggs trying to figure out the style of Tillis now. And there is almost uh, a shoestring James. punch. As uh, Tillis James, looked down and then threw the left on, hook. James, cut that out. 38 professional bouts. He has fought Mike Weaver, championship bout. Finklin Thomas, Greg Page, Tim Witherspoon, and Jerry Cotsia, his go, last Tillis. fight. Come Losing on, a 10-round decision. The voice of Cappuccino, the referee. Tillis now smiles. Come on, come on. And his team of strategists, including Georgie Benton, Lou Duva, feels that he must come forward, negate the punching power of Tillis. Had him against the ropes in this 17 by 17 foot ring. Oh, but he gets caught, Biggs, with two left hands. This is a punishing heavyweight bout with about 15 seconds remaining in round two. Will it go eight rounds? We doubt it. They'll get a rest in about five seconds here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Here's with our customary pep talks between rounds for Biggs in the blue stripe. He's the Olympic champion. Lou Duva told him to get the combinations going. While Bo Williford of Lafayette, Louisiana, Tillis' manager, told him to keep coming. Well, he's been backing off and a counterpuncher, but Biggs wants to stay on top and slither, especially that left hook, because Tillis is a converted southpaw, and he has tremendous power on that left side. Round three. Close that glove, James. Tillis has to like the fact that the fight is only scheduled for eight rounds. He's going 15. He's going 10 many, many times. Whereas Biggs is only going six in his young professional career. Trying to get to the body with that long left jab. Tillis dangerously against the ropes. He gets tagged for the combination. Tillis in trouble. Biggs trying to earn it here in round three. Hold it. Let him out. Let him out. About a minute 57 remaining in the third round. Tillis has been stopped three times by darn good Stop fighters. Punching. Get off him. Get off him, James. Page and Witherspoon. Come on, James. A little Get bidding off. for time. Tillis uh, putting Biggs to the canvas by pushing. Covering up is Tillis. Reverting to his experience. But he gets caught with a right. Does Biggs have enough power to put him down? About a minute and a half to go, round three. Frankie Cappuccino, the referee, looking closely. Dr. Wallace Harrison watching as well. Tillis doesn't seem to be in that serious trouble. Watch him now, he'll come out. Get off his neck, James. Now, he just hit Biggs and buckled Biggs' knees with a left hook. 
So while Biggs was expending a lot of energy, the Wiley veteran, Tillis, fires back. I play. We have about 55 seconds left in round three. Remember, Mark Greeley, one of the great prospects, goes against an unbeaten welterweight named Troy Wortham, who has had 25 Jump fights, Jump all victories. Now they're going to be working inside, so it's good to look and see who's holding and who's tying. There's a right hand that has Biggs buckled again. Biggs has been knocked down in his career, but he's been able to get up and weather the storm. Tail Theo Stevenson really tested him as an amateur. And wanted to meet him, of course, for the third time at the Los Angeles games, but the boycott didn't make that possible. Biggs winning the gold medal over Damiani of Italy. Tillis was a Oklahoma Golden Gloves champion for five years. Turned pro in 78. All right. And they congratulate each other for a tremendously active and punishing third round. I'm sure you do the same as you're watching. We're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in this beautiful Susquehanna Valley, snow blanketed. And here's the man that got caught with several good punches. That's his trainer, Georgie Benton, on the right, former terrific middleweight. And uh, smelling salts on the nose, tiny nosebleed perhaps, is Ace Murata is doing the work. He is the cut man, but I don't see any cut. Uh, facially, you don't have to get in a hurry listen. Knock him out because you're going to knock him out. You understand? Just take your time okay. and pick your shot. You got me covered? Spit it out. I need that time. Hey, hey, we need that there jab. That jab is beautiful. He's running right into the jab. Now, come on. I want you to jab out there. Please, take your time. Okay. Now, take your time. You understand? Now, swallow it. Now, hands up. Swallow it. Don't worry about it. Come on. Hey, let me see a jab. Give me good now. Just take your time. Come on. Let's go. Keep him going back. Come on, no sloppy jabs. Hard jabs. All right. After hearing what Georgie Benton, who scored 40 knockouts when he was a middleweight, talking knockout to Biggs. But Lou Duva, more cautious, says, get that jab out there. Keep him off. Keep him away in this tiny ring. Move forward. Tillis, meanwhile, had that minute's rest. He's been in trouble before, so he knows what it's all about. Look how he blocked that punch. Big's punch with the right hand and then threw a left. A little difficult. He has shorter arms than Biggs by about three inches. And speaking of reach, wait till you see Mark Breland's nearly 80-inch reach against Troy Wortham coming up. Coming up to the two-minute mark of round four. No cuts, neither fighter knocked down, but they both have been caught with stinging, punishing punches. Pace slowing down a bit here in the fourth. Remember, it's scheduled for eight. Tyrell Biggs, who now lives in California, has been training in Houston. Apparently very hard. Is he the fresher of the two? Tell us, being that time has been working hard. And he's catching those jabs, which are very damaging. Duva had told him, his co-manager and trainer. Now he uh, digs to the body. Just beneath the solar plexus. Keeps moving forward. Hoping that Tillis will make a big mistake. Tillis hopes that Biggs will walk into one of his shots. You know the defensive skills. They are noted by the three judges as well as the offense in judging a fight. Five point must here. Oh, and left hook, but Biggs shook it off and came back with a punch of his own. saw how big slip that left. Come on, James. And now, now, here is an indication. Tillis has just moved in and was trying to hang on, but Cappuccino, the referee, wouldn't allow it. At 28 years of age and a long nine-year pro career, of course, he's smart enough to try to catch his breath, which he's doing right now. But you notice Biggs, who was bent over, which is tiring to a fighter, was not necessarily punching away in the clinch. Good right hand by Tillis. Left hook on, by Tillis. Get them on, Come on. You hear the referee say, keep those arms working. They'll get a rest in a couple of seconds. 
The fifth round of a scheduled eight heavyweight bout. I have this fight pretty much even. Between rounds, the tournament in capsule told Biggs to work those combinations to work both the right and left, whereas Tillis in the all-white trucks, Bo Williford, his manager, says, baby, you're losing this fight. Get going. Well, I don't know whether he's losing it. In my scorecard, he's close. Both fighters landing solid punches. And both, obviously, because of good condition, are taking the punches. But now Tillis is um, bicycling a little bit more than he did earlier. Now standing his ground and tried to sneak a right. Just missed. That was partially blocked, but those body on, punches son, are telling. Get off of him, James. Minute 50 remaining in the fifth round. That was almost hitting on the break. Fortunately, it was not a heavy punch by Biggs. Tillis now looks a little arm weary. And Biggs, of course, on, is not him, fresh him, as he was at the start because he has taken punishment. The hands are loose, you work. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line at the end of this round. We'll be taking a station break. These fighters will need their one minute break, believe me. Biggs, taller of the two, a bent over Tillis. In the past has had problem with stamina. Suspect of but his ribs and his right hand, which was once broken. But he's holding up well. He had to be somewhat in awe on, of the more experienced Tillis. Tillis' right manager out, couldn't out. believe that the camp of Biggs would take this fight. It's proving a tough test for both. Good right hand by Tillis. Right. Biggs walked right into it. Tillis Weiser of the two inside when he clenches. Watch him, he'll tie up his opponent, bend him over. Glancing right hand, but it may have hurt Tillis. No, he wanted to come back on that sneak punch again. This crowd is sellout, getting to its feet often. Just out of range. Right, and of course, that's what counts in punching that. power. Being within range is we'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this word from our local stations. Apparently, a somewhat groggy James Tillis on the right. Between rounds, referee Frankie Cappuccino went to Tillis's corner and asked if he wanted to continue. And then warned him, if he continued to hold, he would take a point away from him, as the referee can do. He does not figure in the scoring the three judges do it all. But he can take a point away. Tillis, apparently, in the estimation of his corner, well, they felt that he wasn't hurt enough or groggy enough to stop any bout. And thus far, we don't see his eyes looking any different than they did from the beginning. We haven't seen his knees buckle. As we said earlier, he has been stopped. And I'm sure he wanted to get to Biggs in the first two or three rounds. The scheduled eight rounder is now in the sixth. A left hook, which partially got through on Biggs' midsection. Now, look at those jabs by Biggs. Time beautifully. Mix is getting tired. Come on, come on. Hey, look at that come bending up. Uh-oh. Hold come everything. Do that again. Let's see. It'll push it around. Okay. Let's go, let's go, Cappuccino let's go. Cappuccino says one more time let's here go. in the sixth, and it'll cost you the round. And that would be costly, because it's been pretty even in my estimation up to here. Left hook. Tillis now sort of leaning forward, trying to get inside. And he knows he can't hold. It's amazing the head hunting that's going on here. These nearly 450 pounds of humanity going at this pace. We expect it of the welterweights, which you'll see next. Come on, right 
the talented Mark Freeland against undefeated Troy Wortham of Hartford. 25 professional bouts. That's scheduled for 10. And these two just keep punching away. Stop punching. Stop Those punching, eight ounce Ty. gloves have to weigh a ton at this point. The bell coming up in about 45 seconds, round six. Lou Duva keeps telling Biggs to come on. Keep moving forward. But they're, you know, both tired. Their arm weary. The hooks, the uppercuts. Look at it. Get off him, get off him. just absorbed two good ones and fights back. True counter punch. Get them loose. Here. Get them hands loose. Come on, get the them loose. The bell in 10 seconds. On stop high. Two scheduled rounds remaining in this heavyweight bout in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There have been no knockdowns. There has been non-stop punching on the part of the Olympic champion Tyrell Biggs on the right. And the veteran of nine years as a professional, James Quick Tillis of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The ex-high school rodeo champion on the left has been counter-punching beautifully. The boxing skills of Biggs had great training in the amateur ranks and getting now from George Benton and Lou Duva, who between rounds told him he had to keep punching to the body. The combinations landed by Tillis a moment ago Hurt Biggs, but he comes back with a heavy left hook. Now, he feels, Biggs does, that he's got his man. Look at that forward pursuit. But he has to be careful. Tillis is always dangerous. Credit has to go to Tyrell Biggs. This is only his eighth professional fight. Imagine. All right, let him out. Let him out. Let him out, James. And I'm sure he won't make what turned out later to be an error. And around the eighth bout, take on a world champion as Leon Spinks did after winning the gold in Montreal. Losing, winning it against Ali, and then losing it the same year in New Orleans. The timetable is a little better for Tyrell. Careful management, but his opponent today has been by far the hardest test. Tillis saw the golden opportunity. Let him go. Mostly arm punches now. Not necessarily the left jab of Big So. Big has a wonderfully timed left jab. Tell us down, can't be hit. Get off him, James. Get off him. Remember, Stop punching, James. after Step a minute back. rest, they will have the final round. Biggs has never gone beyond six. Tillis has been 15 rounds. In fact, he's fought 208 rounds as a professional to Tyrell's 27 rounds. Mark Breland, Olympic welterweight champion, undefeated, going against an undefeated welterweight who is eager and anxious to destroy the Olympic medal winner, work. Troy Wortham. That'll be next after this Get fight. Loose. We're going to stay here and go to the corners. Listen in. Unbelievable heavyweight action. Got to answer back. 6-5, takes that mouthpiece out, Lou Duva. Georgie Benton coming in. Ace Murata, the cut man, has nothing to do. Let's listen. Look at me. This is the last one. I want you to drink that. Drink that. Drink it. 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 Last round is going to be desperate, okay? Now look, not to mind. Don't be in a hurry. Okay, okay. Last round. Okay, now don't be in a hurry. Okay. I got it. You got to fight like you right. ain't never fought before, son. You're not winning Biggs this fight. Biggs' corner. That's Georgie Benton, Lou Duva. Now, Tillis' corner. You got to go out there and kick his ass. Give me another ring. Come on, my heat. Using the water bottle. And uh, easy for the cornerman <laughs> to say what to do, right? 
These two have expended a tremendous amount of energy, which right is there, credit son. to and get both right, trainers. Seconds, clear the ring. That's get the voice of the referee. Stay in your corner, Ty. It's the last round. All right, stay in your corner, Biggs is told. Wind up like real pros, both of you. Oh, you hear that? Wind up like real pros, the both real of you, slick, the yeah, referee. Real slick. Good body punches by Tillis. Get off him, get off him, James. Get off him, James. Well, Tillis didn't get to fix in the early rounds, which he had hoped to do, undoubtedly. But he's hung in there. And he is trying to put a little pressure on Biggs. Circling now in this 17-foot square ring. Small by usual standards of 20-foot rings. There's Biggs of old, up on his toes. Wants to uh, preserve what he and his corner feel uh, is victory. It'll be interesting to see what the three judges, Paul Battle, Rudy Battle, and Joel Neal, how they score it. On a scale of 10, we'd have to score a strong nine, wouldn't we? James. Head hunting of Biggs. Been known for accurate punches like that. All right, let him out. Snap let the him neck out. of Tillis. <laughs> Beyond the halfway point of the final round. Tillis looking for his 32nd win. Biggs for his eighth. May be denied okay, his yeah, seventh yeah, straight knockout, on. though. Coming up to the one-minute mark. Covering up. Catching a left. Sending one of his own. Tillis on the right. I think Biggs has okay. answered a lot of his critics. who felt that his stamina was suspect. Courage. This is a talented heavyweight. Good size. Look at him work. Giving it his last as if this were an Olympic gold medal battle. Stop punching. Stop punching. 30 long seconds. Final round. All right, hold it. Come on, come and on, Ty. They Stay tired. Up, <laughs> Tillis hanging the arms on the ropes. But he has not been on the deck, nor has Biggs. To the very bell, they will punch. The Olympic champion, oh, sends in a little love pat after the bell, and Lou Duva comes out to congratulate his charge, one of his five Olympic fighters that he has under the watchful eye in Houston. There he is, Tyrell Biggs. Philadelphia. And now, let me tell you, I respect him. Because he won a bigger fight earlier when he checked himself into a drug and alcohol abuse center and got the monkeys off his back. So we got to say a lot for this 25-year-old, handled beautifully by Lou Dova. And Bo Williford is consoling Tillis a bit, who like Biggs, is dead tired. We'll be back in Amish country, Lancaster, for the decision. James Tillis, Tyrell Biggs, along with you, waiting for the decision. We'll have it from ring announcer Hank Kropinski. The aggressor, Tyrell Briggs, here is the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. The scoring of the officials as follows. Judge Rudy Battle, Scores the contest, 39-33. Tyrell! Judge Joe O'Neill scores it, 39-34. And Judge Paul Battle has it, 39-33. For the winner, and still undefeated, Tyrell! So win number...
number eight for the Olympic silver heavyweight gold medal winner at the Los Angeles Games, Tyrell Biggs. And on the judges' cards, comfortably won this bout against an eager, game, and willing James Quick Tillis of Tulsa. 39-33 in the five-point must. 39-33, 39-34. So another hurdle toward a world championship in the professional ranks has been taken successfully by Tyrell Biggs. We'll return with the Mark Breland, Troy Wortham, scheduled 10-round welterweight battle.